Hi, in this video, I will share with you how to expose REST API in our systems. Alright, so in front of us, uh, we have Service Studio, the IDE to develop application using our system. And over here, I have actually set up uh, web applications that we will use to demonstrate the REST API, uh, to, to demonstrate on how to expose REST API and also for that uh, purpose of to, to, to actually demo that I have already set up a product table with the following details like product name, product code and so on and so on and uh, to let's, let's get started immediately so to actually integrate using REST API we will need to go to the logic tab and when you right click on the REST API, you are given the two options to expose or consume REST API. Now, if you would like to, more, to know more in details about the consume REST API, you please feel free to look at the videos, it's already there. Otherwise, you could look at the expose REST API, which is this video's topic, right? So considering that we want we want to expose product so let's just call it as uh, product api you will also notice over here there's a few security mechanism so like for example authentication you can set it to basic or custom and if you want to actually connect or, or, or leverage uh, api token and, and whatnot you could actually go into the office of watch where you can see uh, a number of tokenized uh, API token like AWT and so on. Alright, so once we have this, let's create the simple method. The first one, let's get product. Oops, product by ID. Okay, so this is a simple one. Since you want to, uh, oops, uh, alright. So let me just a typo. Let me delete that. I want to get. When I want to get a product by ID, of course I will need the product ID itself. So by typing product ID, you should get a product ID identifier. If not, feel free to set it uh, accordingly. And of course, we need to understand. You need to get the product itself. So let's call it uh, as product. Again, it will be set as product as a data type. And now let's go into the logic flow. Okay, so to get the product by ID. Right, you can actually drag and drop the product table to the logic flow, and by doing so, you will actually get the whole product. So this is equivalent to select star from products, right? But we want to narrow down to a single product by ID, so we will need to add the filter. So let's click on the filter and add filter. In this case, we want to filter by ID. Let's choose the ID and set that to product ID right so that's pretty much it click done and now you'll see that we will only return one ID okay let's go to the logic flow so you get product by ID instead of get products and what we could do next here is to assign um, the, the variable that we have the output parameters that we have product to the value that we get from here so in this case we will just choose product all right so that's pretty much it so we have one method get product by id now let's make something a little bit you know challenging a bit more uh, advanced let's say that i want to change the product name so how do we do that right now of course probably you want to change the HTTP method to something else so instead of get you could actually supply in let's say post for example and over here let's do the same thing to edit a product name of course you need to know the specific product to change and also the other thing that you know is you need to know is the new product name right so let's call it new product name and last but not least perhaps you also want to understand whether the operation is successful or not let's Call it as is success okay so this time around i'm going to do or to share with you the shortcut way 
so remember before on the get product by id we will you know drag and dropping the product and change the filter there is actually a shortcut to do so by dragging the product id itself you will actually get product by id right so this is so much faster than, than you do it in the previous approach so i hope this gives you a bit of the appreciations now the other thing that we want to do here is to set the value right of course we want to change the product name to the new product name so he, over here there's an ai assisted development so you can actually kind of predict what you want to do next uh, all right so let's say set the variable and what is it that we want to set let's choose the name product name and set it as a new product name like so okay now this time around we are still going to use the ai assisted development and you will notice the suggestion is now very much uh, tailor, uh, sorry very much narrow down to the following which is update product so whenever we when we make changes to it so we will need to to call the function to basically commit the changes that we have so with that in mind we can just set to update product right and uh yeah that's pretty much it for for this now we want to make we want to check whether it's a success or not right so that's uh we need to to set another one so once the update product is okay we can set an assign okay so it's success and then we just say that it's true like so now if something happened that's where we have the exception handling so let's just capture all exceptions so this is similar to uh, your try and catch so i'm just kept catching all exception of course it can be a bit more specific and when the exception occurs what we want to do here is to set is success to false that's it so now we can compile it all right so we have two methods here so have a look let's have a look the you know the the api itself so over here you can actually open up the documentations so our system will automatically create the the the, uh, the api rest api documentation alongside the swagger json as well so as you can see these are the two methods that we have just created all right so that's it I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.